really, um, I mean, you know, God's saying something tonight. It's, um, and I really, I, I sense very strongly it's, it's all about, um, you know, com coming into our, our destiny. One thing the Lord drew to my attention today that I hadn't thought of, I, I don't usually think like this, but was, was the fact that we're, we're in 2011, and 11 is like two parallel lines. And I just felt that the Holy Spirit was saying that this is, this is uh, uh, the, I need to announce the year of alignment. And, and so this is like the year of alignment between heaven and earth. So the two parallel lines, they look, you know, they're very different from one another. Heaven's very different from earth, in a sense. But we, God wants you and I to position ourselves and us as a nation in that, in that realm between heaven and earth. So that we're that link between heaven and earth. That's what the 11 is. It's like two parallel lines running. One side heaven, one side earth. And I really believe that it goes further than that. And I believe that it's also to do with like, you know, we are a multi uh, cultural, we're a bicultural, officially a bicultural nation. Mm. We are multicultural, but officially we're a bicultural nation because we have the Maori people and we have the European and other other, other people who have come in. And you know, last year at the uh, this 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 um, the Moed conference, uh, having a mental block here. Uh, last year at the Moed conference in July, just before that, the Lord started to speak to me about T. W. Ratana. And about how the Holy Spirit had come to him in a cloud. And out of the cloud, he announced himself as the Holy Spirit. He announced to T.W. Radana to, to, to bring you know, the, the, a glory to the nation, to bring healing to the souls and to the bodies of the people of God, to his own people. And now, he, he did that with, you know, with all his heart. And uh, you know, so we did that at the Moed conference. I announced it, and, uh, Apostle Natasha. The mark was here, and, and, and so she uh, administered, if you like, the prophetic word that was released. And you know what? God is so good. I just want to encourage you. This this is like a prophetic encouragement that when God starts to speak to you, you need to speak it out. And I believe this is the year when we align with heaven and we speak out what heaven is saying, regardless of whether it seems stupid or not. You speak out what God is saying in this season, and you speak out the words from heaven. Now what happened exactly the same time as we were doing the Moed conference here, there's three ladies here from Bethel Church and Redding, California. I wonder if they'd stand up please, just, just to identify themselves, just so... Um, and there's another New Zealand, Maori Chicky, where are you? Where are you, Anna? Oh, there she is sitting on the floor. Okay, so at the back then, right at that time, God began to speak about T.W. Ratana and how what had been released was real. Ratana had um, angelic encounters, like Tim has already spoken. All that stuff was going on. And, and at exactly the same time as we, like you can talk to them afterwards, we, I talked to them last night and nearly fell over when I said, when did God start to speak to you in reading about coming to New Zealand to pray into the Ratana thing in New Zealand. They're, they're, they're actually traveling from Marae to Marae in New Zealand and, and, and being welcomed on, on those Marais and releasing whatever it is. There's a sound under this nation and I've been speaking this for like five or six years and everybody thinks I'm a nut. I don't really care. There's a sound under this nation that's got to be released. Ratana got hold of that sound and he started to release when you start to release the sound of the Holy Spirit in the land, something begins to happen because you stand in that realm between heaven and earth and something is, is, is released. Now these guys in July started to get the call to come to New Zealand. <laughs> Who said that prophetic declarations don't work? I believe that whatever happens here tonight, you need to take... You know, we're, we're going to make some more declarations before the night's out. I'm sure I can see Lynn sitting there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make some declarations. <laughs> I, I, and I believe that as, as we do that, you need to understand that you're affecting, you know, the realm between yeah. in, on earth and in heaven. I just need to... The other thing, this parallel revival that's about to hit. Now, you might think, I mean, I'm a strange person. <laughs> and most of you know that, but, but I, I see things that happen in the news and little news items 
that happen and, and they, they really resonate in my spirit. And one of the things that has resonated in my spirit just recently is that, at, um, again, it's a Maori issue, at Parihaka, um, Tonu, who was one of the two, two prophets at Parihaka, if you don't know what Parihaka is, Google it uh, on the internet. It was a Christian community of Maori believers who, who the British beat up and destroyed. They were pacifists and had no arms. And, and they believed in the, that God was going to look after them, but they were they were crushed by the British. And, and um, but you know that's, that's not what I'm talking about tonight. But but Tonu, who was one of the prophets there, his Medi was stolen. Now a Medi is like his mana. It's like who he was. It's like his authority. So when um, a warrior wields a Medi, he goes for the head. Because that's the sacred part of the body, and it's like you know that. So you know, it's like it's the it, it, it controls the life and death of the sacred. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that was stolen by by some people who steal things. <laughs> A thief. <coughs> A thief. And and, um, and and then you know all sorts of stuff started to happen, and they started freaking out. So they they th they, they threw the midi over the fence. There's a reason for me telling you this. Over, over the fence, and and the, they went to the police station, or somebody did, and said, "Look, it's been returned." The Lord, and, and now the Medi has been returned to Tonu. Now the Lord spoke very clearly to me. The, he said, "I now have the Medi, which is the Maori people, in my hand again, and I am not going yeah. to let them go." Is about to be restored. Now, what happens with the Maori people is also going to happen with all the other inhabitants because they've adopted us. We are Taui, we are part of the deal here. And so we are adopted into this land in the same way we're adopted into, into Jesus. And so I believe I believe that whatever's happening is about the Medi is not going to be taken out of the Lord's hand. We've seen moves of God in this nation. You know, lay down. I believe what both speakers have said that this is a now time, and it's Woo! not going to be stolen. Yes. Yeah. It's not going to be stolen. <laughs> I believe that this is this is just a word for the early part of 2011. It's a bit different than what others were saying, but I believe that what was happening in the latter part of 2010, which was a real shift. Of emphasis. Now, I, I produced a word in 2010 that said 2010 was a year of shift. And I believe we've seen a shift in the spirit and in the natural in New Zealand in 2010. Many people, friendships have shifted. People have shifted church. People have, you know, there's been a lot of shifting going on. Long term relationships have shifted. And I believe it's all part of what God has been doing. The shift is here. And I make that declaration. The shift is established in New Zealand. So either you'll be part of the shift, which, you know, Horizon, where we go to here, is, has been part of that shift. They've been in this shift for, like, you know, the whole year. Uh, other people are, are just beginning the shift, but the shift is here. But the shift is not... Is not what it's about. The shift is to bring 2011 the alignment. Mm, good. Right. So the shift is just to bring you into alignment. So don't, you know, don't squeal like a porker at the freezing works. <laughs> when the Holy Spirit begins to shift you <laughs> into what it is that He wants to do in 2011. Because this is a season of yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's yielding. Right. The word is yield. Yeah, Actually, right. the word that I love to use is abandon. This is a yeah, season yeah, of yeah, abandonment yeah. to the Holy Spirit. It's really essential. You can come two ways into this alignment. You can come willingly and in an abandoned love and bow down worship to the whole, to the Lord, or you can come squealing. Yeah. But it's going to happen. You see, we're on a timetable because the other thing is that it's 2011 and 11 speaks of the 11th hour. I believe that time is very, very short. I believe that this is the 11th hour and that God is in a, in a hurry right now. 
one of the things that the Lord spoke to me, and I've got two minutes. No, you're fine. Keep one going. of the things that the Lord spoke to me just recently was when Samuel Marsden, when it first came into his heart to bring the gospel to New Zealand, um, he, you know, he arrived here on Christmas Day, 1814, all right? So he arrived here then, but it came into his heart in 1810. And the thing that stood against Marsden coming was um, a, another ship had just arrived just before that and, and the locals had given them a great welcome and it was a very good meal apparently. So, so, and so the mission society were afraid that if they sent missionaries to New Zealand they might end up as dinner. And so that was just like, so there was two things. It was like the fear of man started to rule yeah. over the power of God. Yeah. We can't send missionaries, they'll get eaten. We can't send missionaries, they'll get killed. We can't send missionaries, it's not the time. So that which was put in the heart of the man of God in 1810 didn't get fulfilled because of two things, fear and religious mm -hmm. obstruction. Yeah. Mm. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt, we've seen both fear and religious instruction, uh, instruction. Uh -huh. That's in schools. We've seen religious obstruction <laughs> rear its head in 2010 in a big way. Yeah. Don't be afraid of those things. You know, don't be afraid because it's trying to intimidate. I don't believe that we have to wait to 2014 for the fulfillment of that which God has clearly put in the heart of the prophetic voice in New Zealand in you know, 2009, 2010, there's a clear mandate being put into the heart of the ministries in New Zealand. A lot of people are in fear and backing up almost because they don't want to go into deception. This is my pet phrase at the moment. If you believe that you're going to go into deception, you are deceived already. Because the, because the scripture says, the spirit of truth will lead you into all truth. And I can't trust him in this season that I can't trust anybody. This is just like a word in season. So right now, I'm just going to make a declaration that this is a season of alignment in the spirit in the land of New Zealand. I believe that this is a year when those that are prepared to abandon themselves to the spirit of God are going to come into alignment with heaven. The Right? Are you ready for this? Yeah. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We declare over our nation, we declare particularly over this city where we are, but also over our nation, Lord God, an alignment, Lord God, in the spirit, Lord, between heaven and earth, that the parallel lines that are running in this season, that, Lord, we, we, we choose, Lord, as a people to position ourselves in that place between the lines, Lord, between heaven and earth, that, Lord, we will be the hands and the feet and the mouthpiece of Jesus in this season. I declare it in the name of Jesus. I declare an aligning. I declare an aligning in this nation. I declare, I declare it from the north to the south. I declare it from the east to the west that this nation will come into alignment with the purpose of the God and that heaven will indeed be seen in this land in 2011. Two minutes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, that's good. I believe the Holy Spirit spoke to me today. I just need to say this one thing. Probably two things, no man. But well, one thing that I need to say right now is that the Holy Spirit said, because of this aligning or this alignment, spiritual sensitivity in the area of the prophetic in the area of, of the like words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the counsel of the Lord, the sevenfold spirit of the Lord, in other words, because of this alignment yeah. in 2011, the, there's going to be a sharpness yeah. end of the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're a leader in this place, you need to make a decision about whether you're going to release the, the spirit yeah. of the sevenfold wisdom power, you know, um, counsel of the Lord in 2011, or not? I would say yes, do it. Because I come back to the, you know, we either come in and yield us or we come in and kicking and screaming. Because I believe that time is so short 
that the Spirit of God. Now, what comes through the east gate is what affects the nations of the earth. I, I, I believe that with all of my heart. I don't, it's, it's something that we don't say out of pride because there's actually a tremendous responsibility that comes with it. Yeah. New Zealand has missed what's come through the east gate more than once. Yeah. It's come here, it's landed here for a season, and then we have left footed it off our nation into some other nation who has moved into the realms of glory. Toronto is a good example of that. It was here well before it hit Toronto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not going to happen again. It is not going to happen again. I believe there's been such a repositioning and a shifting that leaders no longer have that control, that iron control that they had back in the early 90s to close down a movement. I don't think it's there any longer. And I don't think the people will stand for it any longer. They will just move with the shift. So I make that declaration. The shift is here. The people will move with it. We are aligning ourselves with heaven. Hallelujah! church that's so powerful. There's the scrolls being released, which is the, the revelation aspect. And I want to say this, because I think I need to say it right now. I believe there's such a unity coming between heaven and earth and, 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 and this realm, and, and this realm right here, that even the most conservative churches in the nation are going to get are going to start to move in this town. And it's going to happen because the youth are sick of the religion of their parents. They are tired. And so the youth my age and older 